Today we're making pockets from tatty torn envelopes. These are pockets for junk journals which upcycle waste. They have a flap at the top here and a cute little closure to tuck it behind. And you can see I've collaged on the front and also on the back. They're surprisingly robust and quite spacious. So lots of fun for tucking things inside. And what's absolutely fantastic about these is what they're made from, which is waste envelopes, pretty much anything that comes through your door. So you could use one that's been opened like this and you could see the tear, that would be perfectly fine. You could use envelopes in any colour. It doesn't have to have a window and actually any size will do. And I'll show you exactly how to make these using just basic supplies. And because they're super sturdy and so much fun to make, they're great for happy mail, but also unbelievably brilliant for tucking into a page pocket. So I would just take one of my junk journals, this is something I made a while ago, and with an upturned page pocket, so we still get to see the collage, I would just tuck it inside. It's quite flat, it still works brilliantly, and it looks superb in a junk journal. I have process steps as usual, as I do every week, so feel free to take a screenshot, and these are also in Pinterest. Let's transform torn envelopes into junk journal pockets. So the first thing we want to do is just choose a ratty-tatty envelope that we want to transform. And I've done a couple of sizes. I've used the really wide size, which I think looks great as a pouch. And I've also done quite a few in this smaller size. And really any envelope will work. It doesn't matter if it's got all of these torn bits as you open your envelope and that's what happens. So why don't we pick this one to play with today? But you could also use a brown one. You could use a larger one like this. The point is it doesn't need to be one of those whole junk mail envelopes that comes in some post these days. I know that I'm getting fewer of them and also I have a lot more that are just standard envelopes that I rip open when they come through the door. So I thought I'd use this today and what we need to do having chosen our envelope is just turn it over and fold down the top. And we want to make a fold we're already on step two, making the flap of the envelope. We want to make this fold not too deep. And by that I mean when it folds over, we want it to have enough space for this little closure to sit here without, I would suggest, obscuring the window if you have one. So I'll do it by eye. Let's see if I've got a little closure to show you. So when that's on, it just has a little bit of a gap here. I'm not going too far down. So fold over your envelope at the top. Don't worry about any of this clutter here. We'll sort that out and give that a really nice crisp fold. So we'll just make that nice and flat. And then what we're going to do is open this up and I'm going to use a craft knife, so I will say be careful. So I'm going to open up where it's currently sealed and go a little bit beyond. So where we already have the opening, I've still even got a bit of a mess going on here. So we'll just make sure that's totally opened. I'm going to open across the top of our pocket, which is the side of the envelope. So just gently using my craft knife and then I'm going to go down the side here but I'm going to go just a little bit further. I add about a centimetre on. So get my knife back underneath. So I'm going to take it to the fold we've already created and then go a little bit beyond. About a centimetre or so. That's all the cutting that we need. So I'll turn it back over. We've got a flap to do something with at the top. The window, if I have one, is down here at the bottom. And I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just trim a tiny bit 
off either side here to make some tucking in super neat. Don't need to measure this. So I'm just going to take a tiny sliver off the side, just a little bit, like that, which means I can also, at this point, just tear off a little bit of that excess. So what I've got, go back to my front, I've got my window envelope here, the window here, and I'm going to tuck this piece in. So we took our cut just a little bit further. So the fold is here. I've got a cut down the side. Let's do a bit of extra creasing to begin with. So fold your flap down again as far as you've cut. And we're going to fold that in. And you can see what I've also got is a checkpoint at the moment. I don't want this flap here to obscure the window when it's tucked inside here, which is what we're going to do. So I'm just checking that this doesn't go over there. So if it did, I would just trim a bit off here. So what I've got is a flap ready to fold in. I like to keep as much paper in any of my projects as I can and just tuck them somewhere, fold them, because it adds a lot of robustness to a project. And I'm going to take my glue stick, just add a tiny dot of glue inside to hold that flap down, that's all I need. And yes, I've got a bit of a mess of a flap at the top. It doesn't matter, this is a project that allows us to use any ripped envelope. We'll sort that out. I've got a flap that folds here with a hinge and a bit of a step and a gap, which will make it easier to get things in and out. So we've already done steps one and two. How fast was that? What we're going to do now is just add a little bit of decorative paper behind the window if you've got one. And I'm going to grab my tub of goodness. So here we go. This has got, it's meant to have neutrals in and all sorts creeps in, but it's my little tub of scrappy loveliness. And I would look in here for an image. Well, that's maybe too big. I don't necessarily want just a book page. Oh, that's something I've printed and copied. Actually, we could use that, couldn't we? Um, I've got greaseproof paper. I've just I've got paper that I've dunked in acrylic paint to colour it. I've got all sorts. I can see some nice ones on the front. Lovely colours on this. Why don't we try and do it with a a peacock can fit that on. So what I'm going to do is just get an image in here and I'm going to be quite frugal and trim off a bit because that's quite big and I can use any spare paper. So just trim that down. I think he's going to be gorgeous. Is that about right? Yep. So literally trim that down and then with a glue stick, probably dry glue as opposed to wet glue. I'm just going to tuck that behind the window so I've got something cute peeping out. And let me give you a tip, something I've just not done. Be careful as you slide it in so that you don't get any of your glue just sticking to the inside of the acetate. So just be quite careful where I position it. I think he looks lovely. What do we think? So now we want to do something about the fact that this is all open. So we want this pocket to be quite robust so that we can tuck lots of things in, whatever size of pocket you choose to make. So I'm going to add a hinge to this side and it's absolutely fine just to use any old bit of book page. You want it to be just a little bit shorter than the height of this front flap of our pocket. And you'll need a, a couple of inches width because we're going to fold it in half to make a hinge. It doesn't even matter if the paper's quite thin. This is a page from the dictionary. I'm going to get some glue on one side and I'll tuck it in and then I'll add glue on the other. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So I'm literally going to put this 
on the inside here. So I'll take it and just push it in neatly and bring it quite flush with the outside of this envelope. And don't worry again if we've got, we've got gaps here, we're going to cover that up with collage. So I've got half of my hinge glued, just run some glue down here. This is actually quite a quick project. I was surprised when I sat at my desk and had a play, surprised how quickly these came together. So now I've got a structure that's starting to look a bit more like a pocket and we can move on to some decoration. So we're going to collage on the front and the back and the flap, which is both inside and outside of the flap. And I'm going to give you a few tips that make the pocket just that little bit more robust. And it's the way that we collage that really brings it all together and adds the strength. Here's a couple of examples. I've collaged all the way around and on the back of this one. And I've also got a couple of interesting details to suggest playing at doing when we come towards the end. So I've done a bit of mark making. I'll show you how I do that and how I choose the colours. Here's one done with some black spots. And on some of these, I've also just added a little label and I've added some grunge effect. So I'll show you those two techniques towards the end. But let's start by adding some collage on this one. So I need some papers. Again, I'll go back to my little pot here, my basket. Let's pull something out. I might use some book page. So that image would be probably too big. I might use it on the back. I've got some bits I might use some plain packing, some nice scripty papers, all sorts, that's a nice one. I've got some botanicals, more, oh, I seem to have a lot of digitals. I don't normally use that many. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and find some of my collage paper. So this project is perfect for using Amazon packing paper. I'm going to top up my supplies box. Let's just get going with some of this as well. So let's have a piece on the left and the piece to start with, why don't we choose that piece here? We want something that fills this space and more, we want it to wrap around. So I like the text here. I'm going to just measure that out so that the piece is no taller than my front flap. Tear that off. Then I can get some glue on the front here. And you'll see how, as we add our collage, it just remediates all of that torn element in our envelope. And it means it doesn't matter how tatty and torn our envelope is to start with. Just need that to go absolutely butted up, maybe even overlapping a tiny bit with my tatty edge to the paper. To my peacocks. And I'll fold that over. I won't glue it yet, I'll just leave that there. And then what I do is I move down here. So I just have a, my own method. Anyway, is absolutely fine. Why don't we have a bit of dictionary paper down here? Again, I'm just going to tear it to size. Just work around the front to begin with. That's the way I do it. It doesn't really matter how you collage on, on your envelope. But the key is we're using the strength of the paper that we fold around to compensate for the fact that we had a weak and torn tatty envelope to begin with. I'll tidy up some of these excess edges later. I want something at the top here. Use a bit of our lovely collage paper. I do love this. I've got green on it. So really, really love the gold and the green that I've added to that Amazon packaging paper. I've got a video showing how I do that to get these wrinkles covered with gorgeousness and colour without just covering the whole paper. I could go on there. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. I want something up here. Did I pull out some 
book page. Yes, I think I did. Again, what I think I'll do. So I didn't go quite to the edge and glue it down permanently. Maybe get that there. My collage packing paper can go over the top. And I've got excess, because I'm going to again give this a bit more strength on this side. Fold that round. I just want a little bit of piece. See how quick it is? It comes together quite quickly. What else have I got? Maybe a label. A label up here. Peaking. Quite like that. We've gone for a label early in the process. I normally add that as detail on top at the end, but I'm just feeling it. That could go there. I'm going to have something just in that tiny spot. I'm just going to cover up that gap, quite like that. Now I've got quite a lot of junctions where the pieces of paper meet. So I'm going to do something about that, maybe with a couple more labels later. But I'm going to keep going. I'll turn over and I'm going to do the back and the back of the flap. You can see how this is going to give a lot more strength to this side that was open. So all I need to do is fill in something here. I'll get that on there. I'm trying to work quickly. To be honest, I would normally take a little bit more time on my collage, but I don't want you guys to have to hang around. Get these down. And then add this on top because it obscures a straight edge, which I like to do. Get a bit of glue on there. I'm just going to leave a bit of a gap with my glue so I've got space to tuck under as I work up. I really like the greens coming together there. I'm quite happy with this one. I'm going to get some book page for at the top here. Something with greens and yellows. Oh, that's nice. I like to really mix even glossy book pages with some of these classical digitals or vintage book pages. I like to really mix it up. I know it's popular to keep a lot of the collage using just vintage, um, not modern pages, but just what I like and, and it makes me happy. So that's what we do. Actually, I think that is too busy with that being on there. I'm going to go for a bit of contrast. So, quite like that. A bit off down there. And you see what we're doing? We are using our papers to fill in the gaps where the envelope was really tatty. Can I tuck it under? I think I can. Great. So I just took that under. How far can I get it? And then I need a piece here just to fill it in. And I'm going to fill in here. So just let me share, I think a bit of a mistake, a tiny one, not that it matters, but I think one of these is a bit squiffy. So what I'm going to do is just deal with that with a piece of washi tape just to hide it from the eye. It's a great little tip for making things look as if they're in the right place, even though we might not have lined things up straight. So I've gone on the back and I've used papers that are not needing to be in any direction so it doesn't matter when I fold this over that it's going to be upside down. So I'm also going to just trim off the excess at the moment. In fact I'll go, yeah, I'll trim off the whole lot. 
if this was a really large piece of excess I might just fold it over and keep some continuity. In here I'm going to just add a couple of pieces of paper in there. Ooh. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. I think they're all nice, let's be honest. I look at my paper and I think it's all lovely. So I think I've got quite a busy front. So I'm going to add some contrast by way of basic book page, which this piece looks just a little bit vanilla if that is a crafting term. I'd rather see the image. Put that there and just tuck it in, basically. And I like to do my top flap inside with two pieces of paper and then I don't really have to measure anything because I just put something over the top. In fact, how does that work just peeping out there? Can we have it that way? I think we'll do that because I mean I'm not wasting that stamp. And then we'll just fold over where we had our crease. We'll just get that back in. And then we're going to move on to a few of the details that really adds the magic and brings it together. And I do like to round the corners. At this stage to decorate the pocket, I like to add some magic and I've got five techniques to share, which I think are just a bit of fun and really add something. So the first thing I like to do is use my washi and it just adds a tiny bit of extra. You hardly notice it, but then as you look further, you see it probably over the, the borders where one page meets another. So I'm going to use washi. I'm going to use a few labels. So I've, I've put them on the top here and I'll show you how I make them grungy. Have I got one on here? Yes, I've just added one down here. I've also got washi down there. I'm going to add some marks. I've been having fun mark making and I choose colours that match or pull out features of the decorative papers that I've used. So on here I used a nice grungy olive colour. On this one I did it in pen. I still think it works and I picked brown and teal because I've got a sort of teal in here. I've been playing with a white pen so on one of these I've just started doing a little bit of writing in white pen and it just adds some extra detail and on all of them I've brought them together by adding a faux stitching around the flap and the bottom. So let's have a play to begin with by maybe adding a few pieces of washi just around the pieces of paper. So I'm adding it, that's incredibly squiffy. That's a load of rubbish Joey. Fortunately, these peel off and you can put them back on. There we go. Let's just remove some of that harsh edge where one piece of paper meets another. And I like to halve my washi, particularly when it's wide. I've got a few here, so I think they're going to look a lot better with something over the top. And I couldn't honestly tell you exactly where all of my washi tapes are from. But I tend to use the, the washi tape shop and stationery pal and they have different things. So it's great to look in both of them. I'll show you one of my really favourite. So this is one of my favourite washi tapes. This is from the washi tape shop. I just love the colours in this. Should we just put a look a bit on? And I've got from the from stationery pal. I can speak today. My little picket fence is also one of my favourites. That's brilliant because it's got a very strong black and white in it, which is dramatic and brilliant for adding to collage. And I'm a relatively recent convert to washi, so I am still learning, but I just really like it. You can layer it up. I stick probably to two or three tones if I can. I don't go absolutely wild, but it really does help and it's fun. So there's a bit of washi tape on it. What I also want to do is add, let's add a label and just show how that works. 
bit of text down here to rebalance maybe the strength of colour and a bit of text in that washi there. So I might add something on here and I also want to put something on the flap up there. So I've gone for a Tracy Fox Dramatic Black. Do you think it would look better there? No, I don't. I think it would look better just over here. But I've printed this on white copy paper and the whiteness is really showing through. So what I like to do is I'm just going to steal a bit of my lovely gold and give that a bit of a grunge effect. Any of these will do. And being untidy with your brush is probably a good thing. And I'm going to go in with a pencil, maybe just picking something as a colour that works with the rest of our pocket palette. And just give that a bit of definition around there. These are actually watercolour pencils. Maybe I'll take some brown. Well, it's an excuse to use my supplies and to make this really personalised, which is what I like to do. Don't need to do this, of course, just using the water in the brush to spark the pigment there. And it just takes down some of the copy paper colour. The third little element I want to add to this are some marks. So maybe I'll pick the same two colours, so a green and a brown, because I think they work well. And on the widest side, I just like to go down it and turn myself into a bit of ticker tape. Just do little marks down there. And I take my second colour and do these little, they look like little bars across. And it just adds a bit of detail. You almost don't notice it, but it's just extra when you look a bit further at a pocket and it's personalised and it's fun. The other mark I like to do is this black circle and I have been going round it with a white gel pen. So why don't we have a go with a white gel pen as well because what I've also been doing is adding a bit of detail by writing in white gel pen. So let's just write journal. Maybe we'll have pocket. It just is decoration no more envelope pocket for junk journals just a bit of detail there and the last thing I like to do is add some faux stitching around it so I do a simple stitch just around the flap like a running stitch I'm not going to sew on this with a sewing machine I do that on some and down here I would do a large stitch and a dot, give it something different. I'm using just a black gel pen. And now what we want to do is add a closure, so something here. And because I lose things all the time, I've been keeping my all in a little pouch. Make a hole. a hole in my circle. And I'm going to use a cute little brass brad. Push that through. And that should just work for tucking the flap down. Junk journal pockets using tatty torn envelopes. If you'd like to make a junk journal to put your pockets in, then I have a tutorial showing every step and how I fold the pages. I hope to see you soon.